Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Electricity and magnetism can be really fun subjects to learn about in science, but they can be a little intimidating to teach. And a little intimidating to learn. So in this episode, we're going to show you two simple demonstrations to help illustrate the two concepts working together that you can do in your home that your kids will really enjoy. And all you're going to need is some magnets, a battery, and copper wire. So stay tuned, because in this video, we're going to show you two experiments for the price of one. You know these videos are free, right? You mean we don't get paid for this? Before we get started on this week's video, just a quick reminder on our website that it's 100% free for homeschoolers or educators of any kind. Nearly all of our videos that have a science experiment, like the one you're watching right now, will have a free associated worksheet for download that you can give your kids to do for an assessment after the video. The idea is that your kids can watch the video, do the experiment with your supervision or with you, and then they'll have a post-experiment, post-video assessment that they can do that gives you something objective and tangible to show that they learned something. Enough of that, back to the video. Electricity and magnetism are closely related and as we demonstrated in our how to create an electromagnet video, the flow of electrons produces a magnetic field. And as we showed last week in our review of the Thames and Cosmos Motors and Generators Kit, spinning magnets can produce an electric current. So flowing electrons can produce a magnetic field, spinning magnets can cause electrons to flow. Are you confused yet? So in these two super easy demonstrations, we're going to try and make some sense of it all. In this week's video, we're going to show you how to make a paper doll dance by making a simple motor and also an electromagnetic train. Let's start with the train because it's really fun and your kids are going to have a lot of fun playing with it. The hardest part about this experiment is finding the appropriate wire. I ended up getting a 14 gauge wire and a 20 gauge wire. And trust me, you're going to want to use the 20 gauge wire. It's much easier to work with. When I was trying to coil up the 14 gauge wire, you can see I basically had to use power tools to make it happen because it was just that difficult. To find the wire, I went to Lowe's, I went to Home Depot, and I even went to our local city electric supply. And for reasons I'm not really sure, none of them carried bare copper wire of this size. The only bare metal wire that I was actually able to find was this floral wire. The problem is it's just too flimsy and it's gonna make things a little harder than they need to be. So as usual, I went to Amazon to save the day. And trust me, you're gonna to wanna to do the same. It's just easier. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in doing an experiment like this at home with your kids. The next thing you're going to need is a strong magnet. And by strong, I'm talking about a bare metal neodymium magnet. Interestingly enough, you can find these at your Home Depot and they actually had a pretty good supply. Unfortunately, they didn't have the size we need. They had ones that were too big, ones that were too small, and ones that were the right size but had a hole in them. I'm not even sure what you would do with these. If you know, leave me a message in the comments. So again, save you some time and just consider going to Amazon. Just a quick note on these magnets though, they are super powerful as we discussed. If you have young kids, they are quite the pinch hazard. And if you have one of those kids that loves to put things in their mouths, definitely don't leave them alone with these things. Trust me. So in our experiment, we're going to need a AAA battery. And for that, you need a magnet that's just a little bit bigger than that. So a half inch in diameter, neodymium magnet is going to be perfect. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grab a dowel rod or a broomstick that's definitely bigger than the diameter of your magnets and start wrapping the copper wire around that. The easiest way to do that is to go around it a few times and then tape it down. Now you have two free hands to continue wrapping the coil around the dowel rod or the broom handle. You're gonna to wanna to have it as tight as possible without having any overlaps. And yes, this part can be a little bit tedious and take a lot of time, but the longer your tunnel is, the more fun the experiment is gonna be. So you can do like me, put on your favorite movie, sit on the couch and start working on it, and time will go by just like that. Nobody puts baby in the I wasn't crying, my foot fell asleep. Once you have it wrapped, you can slide your tunnel off the dowel rod, and now it's time to make your train. This is where you can get creative with it. And I had my son draw a small train and we were gonna wrap it around the battery, so it actually did look like we were creating a true electromagnetic train. The next thing you really have to do is just place the magnets on each side of your AAA battery. For this to work, you're gonna need the north ends of the battery opposing each other. And since they're not labeled, hold them up, and when you feel it pushing each other apart, this is the orientation that you're gonna to need to put on your battery. Now with your electromagnetic train and your tunnel ready to go, all you have to do is slide it in and let the science do its work. This is when spending the time to create the longer tube really pays dividends. It's as if the amount of fun increases exponentially with the length of the tube.
Before we get into how to make a paper doll dance with a simple motor, let's talk about what's going on and how this all works. Batteries date back to the year 1800 when they were first created by an Italian physicist named Alessandro Volta. He was a giant in science. He also discovered methane gas. <laughs> And now in present day, named for him of course, the scientific unit of measurement for current is the volt. So as we discussed, the flow of electrons creates a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is going to look something like this. Here you can see the lines of the magnetic field being created when I place the iron filings on top of the magnet. And pro tip, magnet kits that come with something like this are really fun for kids to use and very interesting for them to be able to visualize the magnetic field line. If you're going to do this, be sure and put a piece of plastic on top of the magnet so you'll be able to redo it over and over because if you don't, the iron fillings will attach directly to the magnet and it's a pain to get off. So we know that when two similar poles of a magnet come together, they repel each other. And when two opposite poles of a magnet come together, they attract. So when our battery with the magnets on each end is pushed through the copper wire, those magnets come in contact with the copper wire and that then allows the electrons to flow from one pole of the battery to the other pole. And that of course creates an electromagnet. So that of course means we now have an electromagnetic field inside of our copper tunnel that we made. And we know that the magnets that are on each side of the battery each have their own magnetic field. So in this setup, if you position your magnets correctly, you will have three different magnetic fields. One from the magnet on the negative end of the battery, one from the magnet on the positive end of the battery, and one from the electromagnet that's created when the magnets come in contact with the copper wire, allowing the electrons to pass through. The opposing and attracting forces of these three magnetic fields are what propels the battery through the copper wire tubing. This results, of course, in the world's easiest electromagnetic train. And if your train gets stuck in your tubing, as you can see, a little bit of a jiggle is usually all you need to get it going again. Another example of doing something like this is creating what is called a homopolar motor. If you don't want to spend the time creating a copper tunnel, you can do something like this. It's also pretty neat because you can have them spend a few moments creating hands and feet and faces and they can make their own little action figure that dances around. It's the same concept, only implemented a little bit differently. Instead of pushing the magnet through the wire, this time the magnetic forces are going to turn the wire around the battery. And if you do it just right, with just the right amount of balancing, you can really create some cool figures. So that's it for this week's video that just scratches the surface on electricity and magnetism. We have another video being cooked up as we speak that focuses a little bit more on magnetism and some fun things you can do with it. So be sure to subscribe and like and ring the bell so you don't miss it. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody.